So originally this was going to be more of like a recommendation, just talking about the story from start to finish, but I decided to scrap it. It was about 45 minutes long and felt a little bit pointless. Instead, I would rather you go read the story, which you can on Manga Plus for free, and then come back here and watch this if you're still interested. Because the more I thought about this brand new work by Tatsuki Fujimoto, the author of Chainsaw Man, Fire Punch, Now Yuta One Shot, and a couple of other stuff that he's done, this brand new one shot called Look Back, for me personally, is kind of like a reflection of himself and it definitely could be kind of overreaching in that department it's a very melancholic story it's very sad it's very emotional it does have obviously a lot of bright points and handles its characters really well but i look at fujino and i look at kyomoto and i can't help but both of these characters are quite literally just a reflection of himself Fuji with Fujino and Moto with Kyomoto, Fujimoto. Uh, not to mention the sheer amount of references that it has to Chainsaw Man, the door within Chainsaw Man, which is a reference to forgetting about the past and uh, kind of locking away trauma and any sort of personal issue uh, that you've had growing up or anything along those lines, mental, emotional, physical, locked away behind a door that is kind of not only drawn and approached by the Kyomoto, Moto character, but also the harsh reality of Fujino and losing that side. Even down to the serialized manga that is drawn within this story. Basically identical or a reference to Chainsaw Man, and you could easily just say that this story is just paying homage to Fire Punch, to Chainsaw Man, to all of his previous works, uh, but if you take it that tiny bit extra further, that handful of steps, I think he is definitely channeling from past experiences, past emotions, and the way he's thought about artwork, manga in general, and uh, potentially even his future. A lot of people have already asked me or have approached me with the question that is this a cry for help? And I feel like it would be disrespectful to say that no, this isn't, but I also feel like it's not appropriate to say that it is. From my understanding of Fujimoto, just from his works, how he likes to write, he draws on past experiences quite a lot. It's why it makes a lot of his characters feel very personal, feel very natural, and come across freely in a way that is very understandable, that people can relate with, that people can fully understand to their heart's extent because they relate to such a character so deeply. It could be anyone within Chainsaw Man, it could be anyone within Fire Punch, but he also has this very, I don't want to say egotistical, but chaotic side to himself that is very humorous in nature. The way he handles specific characters, the chaoticness that he draws, the blending of this humor uh, is is always within his works, even the more serious, unpolished tone like Fire Punch, for example, whose world is completely suffering and tragedy and despair in itself, yet the characters within it are a kind of mere reflection of not only himself, of the world, but also have this humor interlaced within it, molding bright, humorous moments with deep, dark moments. It's like this clash of tones and atmospheres that work well normally when it's drawn out and fleshed out fully, but in Fujimoto's case, he likes to contradict everything. He likes to clash them very drastically together that, for a lot, can be very jarring. I think it's the biggest reason why a percentage of people that read Chainsaw Man, for example, just see it or take it at face value. They indulge within Chainsaw Man as a chaotic, corny-esque story, quote-unquote. Yet, underneath Chainsaw Man is something entirely different, and if you ever were on that prior side where you thought Chainsaw Chainsaw Man was corny or just chaotic and that's all it ever has been, read this one shot. Because this is the prime example of what is underneath Chainsaw Man, the story that isn't told on the surface. The story underneath its characters, underneath these lingering emotions, these pasts, these traumas, these trials and tribulations that people have to face. The look Back for me is easily one of Fujimoto's most impressive works because he not only manages to channel what is so loved about Chainsaw Man, Man within its characters, within how they act and the quirky attitude that they uphold, but finally makes it more known for readers, makes it more obvious, makes it more apparent how much suffering can come from it, how much embedded tragedy and deep-rooted issues or emotions can affect an individual or individuals. 
it's quite a lengthy read. It's 140 pages, but it takes you through the motions uh, of two children, how they appreciate artwork, how they kind of see it very differently and how their positions justify their viewpoint very differently. Fujino is more egotistical and loves the praise that she gets from drawing this artwork, yet when someone else comes into the industry or someone else comes into uh, the same weekly uh, school magazine that she publishes into, that praise that she loves loves is no longer a thing. Komodo gets that praise. Her artwork is incredible. It's much better than Fujino's. Yet Komodo doesn't go to school. She's a heavy recluse. She stays at home and is locked inside of her room. And Fujino would do everything within her power to try and match Komodo to the point of even giving up. But the person that brings her back into the fold of creating manga to loving what she does is none other than Komodo. They meet for the first time and Fujino's rival, the person that she was going up against the person that she was trying to compete with is also her biggest fan. From there, they uplift each other, they create each other's stories, they write their future together. I think a good focus is that Kyo being a recluse is something that slowly starts to fade away. She still has this anxiety, she still has this crippling nervous nature when she uh, meets people, when she talks to people, but it slowly starts to heal itself because of Fujino, because of the path that they take as manga authors and how they uh, work together, how they continue to thrive and better themselves to put themselves in better positions. Fujino never really forces Kyo to do anything that she's uncomfortable with but just enough of a push to allow her to decide for herself. Sometimes it comes across very brutal and blunt and uh, even egotistical or manipulative but Kyo never ingests that with a horrible intention. More so an intention to bettering herself and maybe even tries to deter away and starts to rely more so on herself rather than Fujino. I think the ending is definitely most prominent. It's like a story that is conceptualized by Fujimoto's own past experiences, how he feels, his emotions, uh, and they're reflected within both characters, but I don't think it's a telling of his future or a specific titled cry for help, if that makes sense. Obviously, I'm not the person to judge if Fujimoto is okay or not, but I think with how he wrote Look Back, how he approaches Chainsaw Man, his interviews, his prior works, he likes to put himself within the story. He likes to make it feel very natural and uh, something that you can kind of correlate yourself with. The ending is kind of like a mix of alternate timelines. You can view it as something very special or spectacular where Kyomoto's room is kind of like a dimension in itself. It's not necessarily time travel, but you see two different versions of the life that both Fujino and Kyomoto live. One where they're together and one where they're apart. But in the quote unquote alternate timeline or version, they end up meeting each other once again and also end up drawing manga together once again. The difference is that in the main timeline, Komodo unfortunately dies. She gets killed by a crazy axe-wielding maniac. In the other timeline, Fujino never becomes an artist till right at the end, till they actually meet. And Kyomoto doesn't have these very joyful and lovable experiences that she has with Fujino in the prior timeline. So it's almost like there's pros and cons in both. That even with alternative timelines and experiencing both timelines, you can't really put your thumb on what would be better. And now that I think about it, I feel the ending and how it's represented is kind of the whole point. Is that the life that you live is the only one that you get. And that even in an alternate timeline or another life that you could potentially live doesn't mean it's going to be better. It doesn't mean you're going to have the same experience as your previous ones. It can be just as much tragedy within it or you could miss what made your previous life so good. Do you see how by the end both timelines kind of bled together? That the main Fujino that we've seen who was an artist that experienced Kyo's death is the one that continues after. We see the alternate version where they don't meet, where Kyo doesn't thank Fujino for taking her out of this room, for helping her to experiencing this whole life together. I think a lot of people may have taken the ending as like the biggest quote unquote problem where Fujino continues to work on her serialized manga uh, regardless of all 
all the tragedy that she's been through. The way I see it, however, is more so to continue Kyomoto's legacy, to continue a life that they wanted to live together, not only for this independent story's sake, but in the reflection of potentially Fujimoto, is something that he still enjoys. I don't think he's doing manga just for the sake of appraisal anymore. Maybe that's what it was at the beginning, but now it's a lot more personal. Maybe he realized that there is trials and tribulations, there is hardships, and he could take different directions with his life. He could quit entirely. He could stop drawing entirely. But I think that's the whole point of Kyomoto in general, is that even with a completely different outlook or timeline, variation of life, it's either still going to lead him to art or still lead him down a life that maybe he doesn't want. So he continues, just like Fujino, with what he knows best, what he's happy with, and what he's indulged the most enjoyment from. I think it's a showcase of growth. Fujino was very quick to give up when she couldn't compete with Kyomoto. And you would think that that type of quitting mindset would come back after experiencing such a tragedy would be very understandable. But she doesn't. She continues that legacy. She continues forward because Kyomoto loves the manga that Fujino created. She read every single volume when they went their separate ways. As much as this may seem like overreach in terms of trying to psychoanalyze Fujimoto or whatever, I think this could be just a reflection of how he loves manga creation so much and understands that there's trials and tribulations with it, that there is rough issues that comes with the weekly manga experience, or just with the manga industry in itself, that he's had to face a lot of different hurdles within his life as a child, but manga and art specifically has changed it for the better, and while it has produced very traumatic experiences, he still continues to love it and fall in love with it and loves to produce it regardless of the cost. That is something we may never really know and to be honest it's something that I don't think we need to know. It's something that is not our business unless Fujimoto himself wants to come out and state it. It may be even wrong for me to talk about it in this specific way to make these quote unquote assumptions so I apologize. All I feel is that he puts a lot of real emotion within his work. Reflections of things that he's experienced within his character characters within their experiences, their trauma, their tragedy. He's done it for Chainsaw Man, he's done it for Fire Punch. I think Look Back might be the most polished of them all, and I can only hope and wish for the best with whatever he decides to do. I'm sure this is a big consideration for himself going into Chainsaw Man Part 2, changing magazines and him explaining that for Chainsaw Man Part 2, he wanted to change the tone of the story, he wanted to make it feel entirely different. He has quite literally done that. He has evolved in a very beautiful direction and with whatever he decides to do, I couldn't be more excited to experience it. And I hope that he's able to produce content that he's happy with the way he wants to, at the rate that he wants to, in the healthiest way possible. I'm happy that he's switched magazines and I'm hoping they give him the freedom to be able to do that. Look Back is undoubtedly an experience and if you haven't read it, I'd highly recommend you go do that right now. So with that being said, that is basically it. Let me know how you felt about Fujimoto's brand new one shot. I know it's got a lot of people emotional. I think it was very beautifully done. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and or interpretations. But I want to thank you all for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I greatly appreciate it. Drink plenty of water. New video every three days. And I will see you within the next one. Goodbye.